I'll say from the, my, from, the, from the outset that for me, I don't think of myself as a children's book writer. I think of myself more expansively as a writer and the stories that are dammed up in me come out and they, they, take, what, they take different forms. I write short stories, I write poems, um, I write dramas and I write nonfiction and I write children's stories. And I was as surprised as anyone when I realized that certain stories were taking the form of expression of children's book writing mm. or children's stories. And so I think one of the things I would share from the outset is to be open because you never know where the road, where the road will take you. you. You have stories to tell. Um, for instance, um, starting with Lost, the Caribbean Sea Adventure, It's, this story was inspired by real life. Every story, if you think of children's books as just another story, you find inspiration all around. Um, this, we had a situation where an Arctic seal, a seal from the Arctic, those cold waters of North, found its way into the Caribbean Sea. And then that made big news here because it's a rare sighting. And so when you see an animal out of its natural habitat, you know, scientists, environmentalists, concerned people have to get involved with actually helping that animal. And so that was a story. And when I look back at that story, I thought, what can I do with this? And I decided I didn't want, I, want, I wanted to center the animals and have the humans on, almost out of the story or on the periphery of the story. So I, I reimagined it. So I take real life and I reimagine it as anthropomorphic animals. And then the entry point for me, this particular story, even though it's a, a sort of aquatic marine adventure they said under the sea. Um, the entry point for me was friendship. You see on the cover there, let me jump ahead a little bit. You see on the cover there, um, an Arctic seal, that's dolphin, the Arctic seal. There's a reason why his name is dolphin and coral, the jellyfish. And so that was actually the first scene that I wrote, them meeting for the first time. This idea of, and how I imagined it was, you, might, you know, the first, every person can relate to this, the first day of pre-K or kindergarten, when you're going to school for the first time, and you're on that playground before you're in class and teachers telling you what to do and you have to be, you're standing there alone, your parents are not there, you don't know anybody on the ground and now you have to make a friend. So that was the, the sort of way that I worked my way into this first meeting. How do these two people connect? I mean, obviously they have a natural connection because they are um, in, one is lost and one needs to help him find his way home. But first, first and foremost, before that is, who are you? Um, in the case of Coral and his Nima, I started off by focusing, even though you're telling the story of animals in the different environments and you have to do the research, it all comes back for me, as I said, the character. So they were first and foremost, a boy and his grandma. Right? And the grandma is an adventuring grandma because I like to color outside the color outside the lines a little bit. So I made her someone who has been on a lot of adventures and that's something that sparked um, his daydream. He's a sort of daydreamy character and she kind of fires up his imagination. So Dolphin is an Arctic seal. Other seals call him Dolphin because of his funny looking nose. Beautiful like a bottlenose dolphin, says his Nima. Nima has traveled further than any other seal. She tells of adventures with sea lions in Dominican Republic, humpback whales in Dominica, and bottlenose dolphins near Antigua. Dolphin, the Arctic seal, tries to picture real dolphins swimming and leaping through the water. So his Nima fires up his imagination and then he finds himself here in the Caribbean. And in the Caribbean, he meets Coral, the jellyfish. So his first encounter with Coral goes a little bit like this. Where am I? Dolphin asks. Wherever he is, the water is warm, warmer than he's used to, and everything is different. So many colors, so much light, so many things he cannot name. Dolphin whirls and twirls, trying to see it all at once. Is that a blue octopus? A seahorse? A lionfish? His Nima told him of places like this, but he thought she had made them up. Dolphin the Arctic seal feels a tickle of excitement. So I want to create that sense of wonder and that sense of newness. So you have to have an Arctic, 
I, I think one of the more important takeaways, whether you write a children's story or any other kind of story, for me, as I said, I enter story through character. What does the character want? Dolphin wants to have adventures like his Nemo. By the end of the story, he has had his adventure and he has stories of his own to tell his Nemo. So the story comes full circle. He goes on his adventure, he has adventures of his own, and he's, it, but it comes back to that connection with his grandmother and that closeness with her and wanting to have something that they share together. And of course, his new friendship with his new friend, Koran, who he has to leave behind, but who was, you know, those friends you have for a season, that's a friend for a season who will be with you for the rest of your life. So even though it's about an Arctic seal and a jellyfish, it's actually about people. So this is one of my favorite images in the book is because how one because when you're talking about children's picture books how often do little black girls from the caribbean or anywhere get to see themselves and realize how beautiful they are we grew up on the fairy tales the snow whites and the, the sleeping beauties and so on so the, the story in a lot of ways is about energy it's about intention do good and good will follow you do bad and you might you know bring that karma to yourself and so this little girl um the sort of general idea of the story is that she she has a goal she has a need you have to know your character's needs and wants and goals and you have to know what they really want the thing that they're not even admitting to themselves what they're prepared to do to get it and what are their obstacles to it that's generally every story what do they want what do they really want that's their intention that's what drives the story what are they afraid of that becomes the block or the obstacle what are the things that they have to get over to get to the finish line whatever the story is whether you're a gel uh, static seal that's trying to get back to to the, um, the Arctic, who's stranded in the Caribbean, or whether you're uh, a little girl who wants to pick some mangoes because you're hungry. But this is my favorite character from the book. The, 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 the little um, thing on her nose there, that's the mango tree fairy. It's, and the mango tree fairy is described in the book as looking like a mango blossom. Now, if you've seen mango blossoms, they have that little yellow and green and those, all these colors that you see are the, the, mango, the colors of the mango blossom. And of course, as you see, the mango tree fairy is very, is very, very tiny. Um, and one of my favorite that I did, this is a sidebar after this book came out, is that I did, you know, we have carnival in the Caribbean. So I did this for carnival. I did the mango tree fairy. I made the, I, me and some friends of mine, we made the costumes and we played it mass on the road for that one year. We had our own mass troupe. And we played the mango tree fairy and the reason why one of the reasons i wanted to do that is i want to see these types of things in our spaces i don't want to just see the doras and the, the you know the the, the the characters created in the mainstream i want to see our characters inspiring our imagination and i think if i can leave with anything it's that it's right from where you're coming from write stories that are specific to you Write stories that matter to you because there's somebody else out there who hasn't seen that story yet. There's somebody out there who hasn't seen a little black girl with wild plaits, dark hair, so beautiful, so resourceful, so kind, so good, and who, who at the end of the day can see themselves reflected in her. And it's really just a story, going back to how stories conceived, it's just, just a story that was. Um, Imagine from a few things, from seeing my, my, my mother with her grandson, how he was shadowing her all the time and she's always, you know, in the jungle outside, which is the garden. Um, from my, one, my other nephew who's afraid of climbing trees, because I, I, I don't understand, we grew up climbing mango trees and he, the mango trees, mangoes are falling, falling, he's not climbing, he's like afraid of heights. Um, so the, the character in this book is afraid of heights. And the grandmother, when she was a little girl, was a boss mango tree climber. Now, one of the things I try to do with my, my children's picture books is I try to, as I showed with, with, um, with Grace, the, the, you know, she looks a certain way, she's resourceful, and she's not a damsel in distress, she's saving herself. In this one, I wanted the, the grandmother to not be a typical grandmother. I wanted her to be um, an active grandmother who was engaged because that's the grandmothers that I see. And sometimes I find that in, in, we tend to have this, we tend to put out one image and there are many different types of the same person. So when my mother saw this image, that was her first reaction. When I was a girl, I used to love to climb trees and she didn't even know that she was the inspiration for this story. So 
And then the other thing was, this is her as the, that, that's her and her grandson. Now, another significant thing about this image, this is the illustrator and I, for, this is our favorite image because one of the things that you grow up hearing in the Caribbean is girls shouldn't climb trees because they won't blight the tree, meaning that the tree not going to grow up and bear. And so I wanted to put a girl in a tree. We need to break those sort of stereotypes. And one of the magical things about children's picture books is that they are what begin that process of socializing children into the idea of who they are and who other people are. Where do we learn that you have to be rescued by a man? Where do we learn that there's only one man and you have to be this and that and the other? Where do we learn, um, where do we learn that you have to be, you have to have fair skin and white skin to be beautiful? We learn it first of all from Snow White and Cinderella, nothing, I mean, not knocking them, but we learn certain things from the dolls and the stories and the songs and all the things. So one of the responsibilities, and it's not even a responsibility, one of the things I have fun with when I'm writing children's books is turning that stuff on its head. Takeaways, a story can be a simple thing. It doesn't have to be complicated, especially the younger you get. A, a, a Arctic seal is lost and needs to get home. That's a child is lost and needs to get home. He finds a friend, he gets some help. How does he get some help? You're troubleshooting, okay, how could he get home? You figure it out, that's a story. Um, a girl go, climbs a tree, climbs a hill to ask a favor. Um, a, a, a boy and his grandmother explore the jungle outside. Stories are all around us. You have a lot of fear right now and young people around climate change and the environment and the, the feeling of this thing being bigger than us and I have no control over it. How do you use story to give them agency, to give them a sense of some small power that they have in that situation to do something that can change the world? And you don't have to change the world, just change their little part of the world. And that's what stories can do. Stories can teach them to love themselves. Stories can teach them to be, act, be proactive and not feel so as helpless as they do sometimes when they look at the big issues and stories can entertain and give them magic. I love to put a little bit of magic into all of my stories. I think of them as speculative fiction, as magical realism, because that's what fairy tales are. They're just a children's version of that. 